It's what you do. Hello, for today's video, we're doing something I haven't done in a while. We're using my sewing machine. When I was in the Dollar Tree quite a while ago, I happened upon the fabric section. They have like a little area with different crafter square fabrics. These are pretty small pieces of fabric that are very rough in texture and quite thin. But I like to sew and I thought it would be interesting for me to try to create my own plushie. I used to take sewing lessons and I used to sew my own clothes, so I'm fairly well versed in sewing clothes. I'm not like an expert or anything, but I know how to at least sew some things. However, I certainly have absolutely no experience sewing stuffed animals and I definitely needed a template to follow. So I surfed the internet for the simplest teddy bear template. If you don't know what a sewing template is, it's basically like a visual instructions for how to sew the thing you're trying to sew. So here we have a head, a foot, a foot pad, an arm, a leg, a body. It shows you how to cut it out with the fabric and where to leave the openings when you start sewing things together. Once I've cut my templates out on paper, it's time to choose my fabric color. I decided to go with this light pink fabric color. It's already opened, but also because I actually only had one sewing thread on hand. Typically people will get an exact match for their fabric with their thread, but I decided I was going to intentionally show the hot pink anyway, so I thought this was good. I spaced out my paper templates, took out my safety pins, and pinned the templates in place. The reason I'm pinning the templates in place is because I'm going to be cutting the fabric out out in those shapes and I don't want the paper moving all around and messing up what I'm cutting. And now we're ready to cut the fabric out in those shapes. You'll notice on each of the template pieces, it says a count on them. For example, this one says arm, cut two pairs. This one is layered with two, so that's one pair, and now we need to cut out a second pair. Since there's two pairs of two, there will be four pieces of arm fabric. For the body, it only says cut one pair, which means there will only be two pieces of body fabric. The same goes for the bear's head, you cut one pair, and there's several different instructions for different pieces of the body. After I cut the pink pieces, I moved on to the purple fabric. So the bear is going to be composed of both pink pieces and some purple pieces. The purple pieces will be more of the accent colors, like the foot pads, the paw pads, the inner ear, and the head gusset. I don't know if I'm saying that word right, but apparently it's a gusset. So here are all of the bare pieces before anything has been sewed, but we have cut everything out. And now it's time to take out our sewing machine and start sewing things together. I'm starting off with the head to this teddy bear, which includes the gusset. What? You'll notice it says A and B on the head, as well as A and B on the head gusset. I'm going to sew from point A to point B. So on the fabric, that would be from point A to point B and point A to point B. That'll create a 3D head. Let's bring out our sewing machine and start off real simple doing that. We're gonna sew again from point A to point B, i.e. the tip of the nose to the back of the head. You do one side at first, so that's this side. I did only the pink to the purple. And now we're gonna sew the other side of the purple gusset to the other side of the head. And this will hopefully create the beginnings of a three-dimensional teddy bear head, hopefully. Okay, so here we have the very small amount we've done so far. If you inside it out, we have the beginnings of a skull for a teddy bear. And now we're gonna sew this side of the head and the other side of the head. This is basically like sewing the back of the head to the base of the neck and the tip of the nose to the front of the neck. I'm insiding this out. The only thing that I haven't sewn is straight across the neck. And that's because I'm going to be filling it with this thing called polyfill. It's basically like stuffing. It's teddy bear stuffing. You can use this to stuff pillows. You can use it to stuff your own plushies. It's basically like this fluff stuff. It's like a cloud. And I'm using it to stuff the head of the teddy bear. 
I needed way more of this stuffing than anticipated, but that's okay. Once it was totally stuffed, I kind of like folded over the neck piece and then tried to sew it as minimally as possible. Sewing the head closed like this is not technically correct in my opinion, but I'll get into that more. We have the two ear pairs and we're gonna sew just around the semicircle, but leave the bottom part of the ear open. That is because once I'm done sewing these, I want the bottom part to be open so I can inside it out and fill it with stuffing. These were so tiny, it was quite a struggle to actually inside them out, but once I got it, I was able to fill it with the stuffing. The fluff, fluffing, fluffing, I like that. The instructions again gave me the same method of closing the ears where you actually see the seam line. I prefer things to be more seamless than that but oh well. So I have the front and the back for the body pair. I'm sewing around the semicircle and leaving the neck part open. That lever I'm pulling right there, that makes the stitch go backwards and that'll actually help hold the stitch in place better. I inside it out the body and then stuffed it with so much stuffing, oh my gosh. This stuffing, you, you think that you need so little and then you start stuffing things and it's like, wow, where's it all going? The case of the disappearing fluff. It just disappears into thin air. Poof. Okay, so we've started the head, the ears, and the body. Now we need some arms. And we're just gonna sew these little kidney beans together and leave a small opening for the stuffing. It turns out when I said leave a small opening, I left a very small opening. I could only fit my pinky finger into these. So actually stuffing this with the fluff was the hardest part because I had to use only my pinky finger. My life is impossibly hard. I can't say this was entirely my fault though because I was only following the instructions and they literally said to leave this size opening. All right, we've done some arms and now we need some legs. We've got two pairs of these bad boys and this looks like a deceivingly simple process. Really only you have to sew the left side and the right side of these legs together. But then you have to have this foot pad on the bottom of the foot. So there's an opening on the bottom part of the foot right there and you have to stick that foot pad into the opening and sew around the oval. Sewing around the oval is easily the hardest part of this whole process because it's such a tiny area and it's very easy to sew over a different piece of fabric and sew the whole leg together. But when you inside it out, it's the most rewarding because now we have a leg with a cute little purple foot pad. I'm filling this with fluff and stuffing or whatever you want to call it until it's nice and firm. Not too firm, but you know, a nice amount of fluff in it so that we feel. Okay, so here we have most of the base pieces for the teddy bear, except the arm paw pads. For this, I decided I'm going to sew this by hand. And that is because I want this teddy bear to look like it was a hand sewn teddy bear. And what I mean by that is I wanna be able to see these hot pink stitches on the teddy bear in certain places. For example, on the arm, there's a paw pad and I wanna be able to see the pink stitching that goes around the outside of this purple paw pad. Part of the reason I decided to do this is because it's kind of inevitable with this type of teddy bear that you're going to see the stitching. And that's mostly because of my fabric choice. If I had used a teddy bear fabric that was actually furry, they literally sell fabric that looks like teddy bear fur. You wouldn't have this problem because it, I could make all the stitches in the world and you wouldn't really see them because you would just see the fur. But with this type of fabric, you're really gonna see the stitches no matter what you do. So I thought it would be more fun to make the stitches part of the aesthetic and really embrace it. The template I have actually didn't come with any type of ear pad. I don't know what that's actually called, but you know, the inner part of the ear when it has a different color, I thought it'd be cute. You know what? Let's give it an ear pad, whatever that's called, inner ear color. Whenever I end my stitches that are done by hand, I create my knot on the sewing needle and then pull it out. That allows you to create the knot as close to the end as possible. Okay, that's one ear and now we have a second ear. And now it's time to give our teddy bear a face. I did kind of like a semicircle at first and then tried to fill it in and make a full circle. This took a little bit of time, probably longer than it would have if I used some embroidery thread, but I got a circle shape and I did that same thing to the other side of the face. 
For the nose, I created a triangle on the tip of the face and tried to make it look like a teddy bear nose as best as possible. This is the only part where I thought, you know what, I really should have used some embroidery thread. Embroidery thread is just thicker and it probably would have been a lot quicker, especially for the nose if I had used that. I gave this teddy bear a nice cute little smile as well as some eyebrows. I'm honestly not the best at embroidery skills, but I tried my best to create a semi-circle for the eyebrows and I think I did an okay job. Okay, now we finally have all of the pieces for our teddy bear and it's finally time to sew it all together. And this actually took quite a while to sew all of the limbs on because I had to do two layers to make sure everything was nice and secure. You'll notice on the back parts of the limb, you end up seeing the seam. In the actual instructions for this template, this was how they told you to sew the limbs on. And that is because I think they were expecting me to use a fabric that would naturally cover it. After attaching the legs to the body, I moved on to the arms. The process was similar to the process of sewing the legs, except they're kind of floating, so it was a little bit more hard to keep them in place. The ears were particularly difficult because it's kind of just like floating in the middle of the head and you have to kind of make sure you're putting it in the right spot. But I did get the ears on and now we have to attach the head to the neck. So I'm threading it through and put a bunch of stitches to make sure that head was nice and secure. And here we have the results of my very first attempt at sewing a plushie using my sewing machine. I feel like the head looks a little bit thin for a teddy bear and it kind of looks more like a mouse, I will say that. I do appreciate the aesthetic of showing the seams, but in the future, I would like to actually go to a craft store and buy some fabric that has some fur and see what kind of plushie I can make with that. If you want to see more videos of me sewing, I actually do have quite a few videos of me sewing clothes, which I actually enjoy and might start doing again. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next week for another video. Bye.